Okay. <laughs> Are we okay now? Yeah, I don't think it very much. Oh my goodness. It's okay. We're back again. Okay. So okay, okay let's try. Me. Let's pop on the presentation. Um, thank you all so much for your patience because this is, it's been hard <laughs> to get here, but um, I'm very excited. So might as well just get started. Um, so welcome to my talk on the internet of things, digital health. It's, unfortunately, I can't see the um, the questions because I'm in the presentation mode, but I will try and get to some at the end as soon as possible. So to start, just to introduce myself, I am a recent Warwick University graduate where I studied engineering, in particular electronic engineering. I am also currently working within the company Arm um, within open source engineering as a software technology manager. My interests are mainly artificial intelligence, the Internet of Things, everything product, as I'm currently working within a product role, technology, anthropology, and startups. So it's quite broad. Um, outside of technology, I also love languages and reading. So I do have a you know thing outside technology. Um, I also recently presented at the International Conference for Undergraduate Research a couple of years ago on a very similar topic of healthcare and finance within Africa with a focus on Ghana. And as of today, I've just started writing on Medium um, and I will be able to pop a transcript of this presentation up for you to have a look. So just quickly, the talk that we're gonna have now is about IoT emerging markets focusing on Africa and its applications in healthcare. And it's gonna be quite high level as well. So let's start by having a look at what the Internet of Things actually is. So the Internet of Things, as you can see, the definition here is a system of interrelated, interconnected objects that are able to collect and transfer data over a wireless network without human intervention. Now, sometimes there is human intervention, for example, when you want to put in data, but a lot of the time it's really good for collecting data, for transmitting data and for getting that feedback as well. The Internet of Things market is huge and we'll look at that more in a second but it was predicted that there'll be 25 billion connected devices by the end of next year. And the global market is estimated to be 1.5 trillion by the end of 2025. Now, within the Internet of Things, there are many different components, which include sensors, it includes machine learning in many cases. We look at the hardware as well, including microcontrollers and microprocessor technologies. And then we look at the ways that the data is harnessed and shown on the user interface. There are some IoT devices that also do not have user interfaces as well, so it's just dependent on the use case. When we think about it from a global sense, we also need to think about the way in which the data will be transmitted, whether it's through a WAN, a wireless network, or the internet, or personal um, data. So it's all just about looking at what works for each different industry and for each different use case. Now, there are many different use cases and many different industries that IoT touches, including retail, manufacturing, supply chain management, and also consumer IoT, which seems to be the most common that you're probably very familiar with, including smartwatches and smart homes and smart fridges, et cetera, et cetera. So the global market for the Internet of Things is constantly growing. Um, in North America, it's a continuously growing market, especially due to the presence of the tech companies that are invested in IoT, including some that are shown below, for example, Cisco, IBM, Microsoft, Google, and Apple as well. The healthcare segment, alongside manufacturing, is one of the biggest segments within IoT, and the healthcare segment makes up 16.2% of it. The banking sector is also supposed to be a market that is expected to grow over the next three to five years. Within home automation, including doorbells, connected light bulbs and smart locks, they are currently and commonly being used in the Western world as well. So as you can see, the adoption for IoT is continuously growing and there seems to be a massive use case for it. Now, with the current global pandemic that we're in, adoption has been quite slow within IoT as well as many other industries but the opportunities that it's now provided especially in the healthcare field will allow IoT to again be able to pick up we have now different solutions that the internet of things and sensors are able to solve and to help us with. 
Now, looking at the global market for the Internet of Things healthcare, over 30% of IT devices are found within healthcare, and the market is estimated to grow to over $2 trillion by 2025, which is huge. There is continuous investment within the digital market and the smart health market, including Microsoft, Google, Novartis, which we'll be able to see. And also within different emerging economies, there are efforts being put in for the Internet of Things. And it's also predicted that by the end of the year, over 87% of healthcare organizations will have adopted the Internet of Things technology in a variety of different ways, whether it's maintenance of tools or whether it's to check patients or whether it is even just for cleaning and supplies or collecting data. Now, there are a variety of benefits for the Internet of Things for healthcare. If we think about patients, the ability for them to actually have quick access to information, including their blood pressure or their heart rate, means that there'll be a better way for them to kind of look after themselves and have better treatment in the future. We also have benefits for hospitals when it comes to looking after equipment that is there and actually being able to tag them so that we are able to know when they need to be replaced or actually their whereabouts, which we'll come on to later as well. One part of healthcare that is actually not looked at very much is healthcare insurance. And IoT can also be beneficial there because of the data that is collected. The data that is collected can actually be used in order to look at underwriting and fraudulent claims based on the patterns presented in the data, whether it's due to patient illness or, again, machine use. There are many other benefits of IoT and healthcare shown on the screen, including better disease control and faster diagnosis, which is useful for physicians, the hospitals and patients as well. Now looking at the healthcare landscape in Africa. The healthcare landscape in Africa and other emerging markets is vastly different to the Western world. They have a lot less resources and a lot more unsolved problems within healthcare. So with about 2.7%, I think it is, of the world's healthcare workers within the continent, there is a struggle to be able to look after people effectively and quickly as possible. Because of the limited tools in the continent, which is currently improving with the presence of Google and Microsoft and the investment into startups as well, having a limited amount of digital tools is proven to be a problem. Other um, healthcare issues that occur include HIV and AIDS, there's a high adult mortality rate, and child health is a massive concern. When we think about healthcare in general, and we're looking at it from a technological perspective to solve issues, we need to not be boxed into technology and we actually need to look at it from a social and a political stance as well. Because as investment in technology increases and as social awareness and social adoption of technology increases, we're able to solve these problems. I think a lot of technology companies in particular struggle to understand the concept that you can't take something from the Western world and just pop it into an emerging market and pop into an emerging economy because you have to think about the ways in which people interact with the technology. You have to look at things such as language barriers as well and social barriers and adoption for what is being put in the markets. On top of that, we also have legislative and structural barriers to help. Like I said, there are some challenges, but there are also opportunities. And I'm going to be talking about one opportunity in particular. But one main challenge that is found within Africa, not just for healthcare, but across many different industries, including finance, is the lack of easy access due to remote areas. Now, if you are familiar, you've traveled around the continent, you do know that there are areas that are a lot less accessible to get to. And because of that, it's harder to get um, enough doctors in those areas, it's harder to get enough treatment in those areas, especially because of the limited amount of medical professionals within the continent. So on the topic of IoT, one of the solutions that I think is the 
most important and is a massive opportunity for growth that I'm going to be touching on is the use of mobile. Now, within the continent, and this is just holistically, at a very high level, there is a growing rate of use of mobile. So whether it's a smartphone or just a flip phone, many people do interact and use mobile, even though the price of internet is quite high and it can be between 10 and 15 percent of an average person's income. The price of smartphones have started to decrease, making it slightly more accessible. As I said previously, there is a need to look on like the global scale and look a bit wider than technology and from there we're able to understand that there are different factors that affect the adoption of mobile for example people that are more educated tend to have mobile phones when you think about the language barriers that are presented if most of our mobile phones are in english and english is not a common language for everybody within the continent we also need to think about gender and age as well in some countries for example ghana it's not a massive problem with age because most people have mobile phones across ages so there's not a place where you can say well a 50 year old doesn't have a phone within that country but there are other countries especially in the north of africa where there are age differences when it comes to the adoption of mobile health one thing that is also a bit of a challenge that is being worked on currently is the access to mobile broadband services and I know that there are many massive tech companies that are already working in this space to provide internet access across the continent. So I wanted to talk to you about a couple of IoT companies and mobile health companies that are currently in this space. As you can see on the map, there are four main areas that adopt mobile technology and IoT. So Uganda is one of the countries listed here that have an app called MTrack, which is used to, pro to report medical stocks around the country. Novartis is a global company and they've been using mobile health and essentially IoT in Nairobi and Mombasa to help to understand supply chain. So as you can see, health is not just looking at the interaction between a patient and a doctor, but it's actually also looking at everything from where medical supplies are coming from, how to gain access into these areas, but also looking at the places and the hospitals that are taking in these patients to look after. And one beautiful thing about IoT is because of the lower and reduced cost of sensors and the availability of natural resources that are starting to be owned by Africans within the continent, we're able to find that solutions, especially with integrating mobile, is starting to slowly by slowly increase. Ghana is another example where they have M Pedigree, which improves the drug supply chain by validating prescriptions, as well as Kenya with Niti Health. Nigeria have Ubenwa, which developed an AI algorithm to diagnose childbirth asphyxia based on the infant's cry. And with childbirth asphyxia being one of the top reasons why children under five die, it's very important to be able to use accessible technology and the Internet of Things and mobile to be able to diagnose and to help people, essentially to help them to live longer. But when we think about the future of IoT for Africa, there are many different ways we can play this. First of all, we need to think about legislation. We need to think about the political and social adoption of technologies, whether it's investments in startups or corporate, whether it's looking at how we can utilize drones to take medication to rural areas and how we're able to collect data in order for us to make informed decisions and to treat patients better and to give them drugs and medication that will help them live a longer life instead of just again copying from the western world and kind of copying and pasting into emerging economies body sensing networks are something that is continuously growing in interest for many people within IT for healthcare and as you can see by the diagram on the screen and um, there are many different places on the body that body sensing networks can operate whether it's heart monitoring or it could be on your wrist or just across the body and what that's able to do is to collect data that can be used 
in slightly bigger villages and even remote areas to continue to understand how people operate because one thing about Africa and whether you go to a singular country or singular area every single place is different every single healthcare concern is different somewhere might have a high rate of HIV and AIDS and somewhere may have quite a low rate and they could be two neighbouring places within the same country. So it's important that we look at ways in which to get technology into the country that is effective, that is easy to adopt, but can also provide us data that will be able to allow us to have at least a high level solution for many of the current healthcare issues now. Again, with, re with wearable sensors, it is very useful to be able to collect that data from different people from a variety of ages and locations to be able to treat them and to be able to have that access so that in the future you're able to see more patterns of healthcare and being able to see like the, his the history of healthcare which can also enable better patient care and treatment as well. So thank you so much, I hope I didn't rush you that um, too much but I just wanted to give you a very high level um, overview of what IoT in healthcare looks like for Africa in comparison to the rest of the world. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me and I will be posting, I think now, um, just more information on my Medium account where you can read more about it and we'll also have suggested links that you can have a look at. So thank you so much for coming and I hope you enjoyed the presentation. So much. That was amazing, Augustina. Um, I think we might actually have a, a time for a few questions. Um, okay. If anyone has any, I'll, I'll keep an eye out. Um, I hopefully don't get, yeah, we might have a few minutes if anyone wants to ask any questions in the chat. Uh, anyone got any questions? Oh, how Lisa Liza Lane? How did you choose areas to? Um, I hmm, I'm gonna ask that question. So, <laughs> with regards to, I'm assuming that you mean, um, why did I choose my research focus in Africa or for technology? I can answer both. Um, so my family are from Ghana and Togo. And I went there for the first time in 2006. Um, and I remember I went to the hospital there and I was able to see how technology had, how the lack of technology affected patient care. And considering that I knew that I always wanted to work in engineering and hardware and that type of embedded systems thing since I was quite young, I knew that I wanted to combine both of those um, research areas into what I was doing in the future. Um, with regards to looking at the Internet of Things, again, my interest in IoT is because it's quite a low cost way for us to implement technology. And especially with the increase of artificial intelligence and big data and machine learning, we're able to kind of advance IoT quite well, which means that for emerging economies, we're able to solve their problems in a way that is not too much of a financial burden as well. So, yeah. Hopefully that answers question. I hope. Yeah, amazing. And I think it's just really interesting to hear from, um, I guess, quite a specific topic and a specific area around uh, the Internet of Things, which could often be quite a um, a, a diff difficult topic to expand yeah. on and and um, contextualize. So that was really amazing. Oh, we've got another question too. Um, did you look in ethical? into the ethical aspects of collecting health related data in emerging economies specifically yes so this was something that um i wish i would touched on in the presentation more but there are a couple especially when we think about the relation between the people within emerging economies and the technology companies in the western world taking that data um i think that one of the solutions and i say that very loosely because with almost every technology solution in the world, there are still some ethical considerations to be had, 
is to spend more time investing on the ground and investing in startups and communities there that will be able to not only safely look at data, but to be able to provide solutions that do help the people that are there. Um, security and privacy is a massive issue that covers IoT across economies and is not just limited to emerging markets. And so it's important that as we grow within this industry and grow within this field that we do make that something that is of massive importance, um, especially when moving to emerging markets. One of the solutions that I forgot to talk about, so apologies, is SMS. And SMS technology is something that does require um, ethical consideration, especially when it comes to how data is transmitted and how it's used. But again, with a lot of technology and technological advancements, there does have to be not some leeway because I feel like technology should really be made for good. But there needs to be some consideration of when it should be released and adopted in comparison to what are the possible problems that come and how can we mitigate them as they are released um, into large masses so hopefully that makes sense yeah definitely does that make sense that was <laughs> yeah you shed a lot of light on a topic that i think people are really interested in that was really good to hear it from you so thank you so much um so thank you, thank you. and so now Room and um, everyone needs to move back into the researcher and sustainability room because we're going to um, the panel. You move, you go in. If you don't, then it will just appear that there's no presenters here. So when we go back to the main room, just make sure you click on that main stage. I think it is. So yeah, um, but we'll post in the general chat to make sure that everyone's clear. Um, thank you. Thank you.